Picking up three kills in the bot lane, leading alongside Faker. They are identical right now. And he's only at 13 CS. The Sen are doing wonders for T1. Yeah. Total damage. Zay is topping those charts, but it's pretty easy to do when you're Nara against the melee. Flashing forward. Mega Nara in the wall. Wall up. Rock toss. One more hit. He'll do it. Zay solo kills. Bin. It's the shy getting way down in this game now as Weibo have their bot lane up top. Zayus will not be an easy dive here. He is healthy and he's got the ultimate back. They're gonna look for it though. Yeah, we'll see what he can get done here. The flash twisted advance comes in. And now Zayus just trying to do what he can to stay alive. It's working! And he is gonna be able to dash back towards the minions. Now Faker turns up, he's got his own nature's grasp, but Shahu is gonna join this one. And Zayus is running the wrong direction. We'll see how much time he's gonna be able to buy here because maybe this is an execute as he heads toward the turret. And there it is! Oh! He's going to channel it now. Heroic Charge doesn't get the stun on to carry as now Sylvie could be in trouble. He takes a lot of damage, but flashes away immediately. Dindin does have the ulti running. Zayus will lock down the... Uh, Herald, I'm pretty sure, as he dives forward, finds the three-man. Now, nah, Featherstorm comes in from Jiwoo, but Peter will be the first one to go down. Gumiushi claims his life there, as now Dundin in trouble as well. Say is throwing houses and rocks, and oh! Magnetstorm! Carrier finally finds his moment! It's a triple kill for Gumiushi, as Faker was taking so much damage. Fiesta will shift some sands, but I don't think he's out of it just yet. And there we go, the flash forward, and that is the ace, T1. Welcome back. Right, that we have four representatives from the same region. But T1, it doesn't look like the pressure's getting them whatsoever. Feels like a victory march down the mid lane. Inhibitor knocked down. Again, T1 taking their time, don't need to overcommit. They have the waves on their side, they have the soul on their side, the gold lead, every advantage they could want. No reason to risk anything. It is slow, it is steady, it is controlled, it is massive damage. Gala firing back with the Inferno Multi just to generate a little bit of space, but Scout getting chunks down. Don't even need a wave, just tearing through the tower as life bars shrink on the side of JDG, or LNG, excuse me. Hope dwindling. JDG on the minds of T1 looking ahead to the semifinals. Zayus just isn't missing, it's ridiculous. It's like 20 shock blasts in a row that this guy has hit, he's monster fed. And he is just having them Can't downloaded. Take back, down to the walls. They use firing up with so much damage down. Go Zika. The pushback is massive. Gala knocked out at T1 eyes on the prize. You know, it's like what, like 240 degrees of the. I mean, it depends on the crown. Well, that's and true. actually most crowns are larger than that. As uh, Bertle is getting. Very much harassed, and there it is again, gonna miss as the exhaust has to come out, but will it matter? I mean, Zayus just gonna throw another house, flashes on him just to be sure. And can they get another charge? It looks like they are going to get another charge, and then we need to even ask the question, but can they actually fully complete this turret? Looks like the answer is going to be no. They do set it up for a future push, and the Sun Disk going to be there as well as, okay. The Ari going to be dealt with underneath this turret there. She has to flash, but it's not going to be enough. And Zayus, that's how you deal with a new player. Yeah. But it's a learning experience. So the next time he looks for an all-in, probably soon. Ooh, there is a flash pulverize onto Sylvie. He's looking to try and run his way out. It's a decent magnet storm, but no follow-up here from Peter. This blade caller is going to do a lot of damage. Owner is just dead once again, though. As Carrier finds yet another one. A great Look at the AoE and look at Zayus. He's just back in, destroying everyone. Zayus, this is the guy that we missed from last week. Where have you been? Oh, it doesn't matter. We're just glad that he's back. That is going to be the triple. The ace comes through. He can really show why T1 invests so much faith into all these top lane carries they pick for him. Huge, huge, huge skill peak for this champ. Take a look at this and the setup. You can see the investment of the ultimate from 369 was just too early. Uh, Kanavi wasn't close enough to be able to turn anything around. And Zayas, he didn't commit any of his abilities, which meant that the second owner was close by and 369 over steps, they were able to get that initial kill. At this point, though, JDG saying we can make the play. Oh, great side oh step from Zayas. God. Great flash away from the ultimate. The knock in the wall from Ona. Oh, oh my god, god. it's and the knock up again. Exquisite mechanics from the top jungle of T1. I mean, he has been amazing, and we've gotten to see many times over why Karia was the spring MVP as well. Oh, that's an R, and Zayas is just going to pop the Zoe. We'll see where the Yankos can answer this one. As, yep, everyone's coming down to try and take him out this time, but the Ram's going to be there. That's oh. two. Two versus five people down here. The rest of T1 are launching.
launching themselves towards these inhibited turrets. Only a single, well, two deaths rather. The Hazman trying to get something back on the top side of the map. Yeah, Zayas is in a pretty good position here, but with BJ coming up, Heartbreaker used, Zayas flashes away. Dodges away from the Spectral Moor oh, no, as well. Oh, gets no. a stun counter strike. He just, he smacks him with a lamppost. What would happen if you gave T1 a real weapon, Zayas? Zayas just gets the outplay. But the Soraka is just a cork in the tip of that shotgun. It is not going well. Snare gonna hit three though, that's big. That could potentially be the start of the fight that they need. Baker trying to zone the rest of the team away, but Scout's already on the back line. He's managed to lock down one. Maybe this is the follow. Viper on the back side, not able to get in though. That's gonna be key. Two and a half seconds from the Zanyas. Not enough. Zeus leaping in. It's a pyro with a gun versus all of EDG. And he's making it work. Carry of the front line, Soraka. We went from dead even to absolute slaughter. T1 taking over the triple for Zeus, dominating the fight going into this series when looking at the pre-game uh, interviews is that Kyle was like, I really am worried about the late phase. Like, that's my biggest concern. It's been great so far. Yeah. Closer coming up here. Zayas, see if he gets caught. Has flash. Can get through this minion wave pretty comfortably as well. As you can see, he's setting that one up. Let's see whether the funny business can come through. He's so, so smooth here for Zayas. Doesn't even need to use his knockup to get out of this one. Okay, let's take, take a look back look. at this one. Honestly, it's just so quick. Oh, so Flandre W'd, but it's a little late. He still took the barrel damage. He was Ooh. trying to dodge the barrel damage with the Ooh. W, but it's a little late there. And Zayus just pops him. As Yeah, this is some of the T1 plays that we were seeing a little bit fast in a few of those more, uh, yeah. The more fast and loose games, exactly. As Cap's going to find a nice charm onto Zayus. Looking to try and trade this one back, but he's just not doing enough damage. Cap's just... Oh, the oh. ult comes through Zayus! Manages to find it. It's traded back in the end. Oh, that was disgusting from Zayus. The fact that he was able to outplay that, get a one-for-one, one, and I think he got the shutdown onto Caps. He I'm did. pretty sure yeah, I saw did. 550 to 350 there. They're not going to grab the kill onto Peanut, but Rift Herald will come forward. There's the ulti from Doran, but he's going to have to flash out of this turret, and uh, Zayas was... not going to uh, go down this time. Felt like Doran just felt desperate to make a cross-map play of any kind, but he was alone trying to just ult under turret. Yeah, Peanut. Ooh, nice doesn't. Sidestep. Yeah, really nice uh, sidestep, but also not able to land the Sonic Wave. T1 just picked up a ton of money on one of their carries in the mid lane and almost eliminated the ability for Toby to farm. Okay. Oh, the bait was so good from Zayas. They're looking for more. Yep, Shahu already taking a bit of poke damage. Light will turn up. As four members are here, teleport event not available for the Shiva. They dive in, the turret goes down, the needlework just rips the center to shreds. And Zayas just by himself destroying everyone. Hostile takeover comes in, Light has the cleanse, but you can't cleanse death. It's a triple kill for Zayas, and they'll get to work on the inhibitor. It might just be the game right here. By himself. Yeah, Dimitri trying to see if he can get the counterplay on the top side, but Faker already moving up here to cover this. He is already covering it as well. There's no level six here from Dimitri. It's going to be a bit of a 2v1 right now for Zeus. He's got that needlework doing work. They're trying to get on top of him. He still won't go down. The charm misses, but it does not matter because it's a spirit rush. One more auto attack gives him the resets as well. Lonely will be forced to flash, but it does not matter for them. And this is something that Faker's been so good at across the LCK is whenever you see these plays happening bot side, he'll just drift to the opposite side of the map, make sure he's covering these cross map plays. Azir with Nashers. And a monster fat chase! And Zeus, full confidence play. There's no reason he needs to do that! But he does it anyway! It's okay. Oh no, it's not okay! We are just banging the midst of the wall! Down they almost all go as the Yumi here. Gary is trying to take down Ghost. He's gonna hop forward in the last little bit of the final chapter. He's gonna take down the Jinx. Not exactly behind Xiaohu, but he's pretty fast. As Xiao is gonna avoid the charm for now. Shock Blast connects onto Faker there as well. He's still gonna look for that reset angle, and now with the Baron buff in tow, T1 feel like they don't need a reset to try and break open the base of Weibo here in game one of the finals. Nature's Grasp flying forward. Ona still has that GA. Oh! Remember, Chris going down so incredibly low. Zayas just executes the Chai up to the side, and there is another one. This guy's Yone is just absurd. And the inhibitor is going to go down. Weiwei is burning there as well. Now Xiao who tries to be the hero, but it does not work out. And I think T1 are just going to end game one here. It's heartbreaking as now they take a magical journey over. Zayas, he likes this one though. One versus three. He's absorbing so much. The Empress Divide. It comes in, but he's still alive. What? What's going on? Baker 
Tidies up the pass. Everyone's just exploding. And Wei Wei trying to get something done, but it does not matter. T1 are too strong. Four times T1 has lost in a game five. Four times they've been knocked out. And four times they have got back up for this moment. It was seven years since their last, a decade since their first. The SKT legacy has been reignited. T1 will be your 2023 world.